you touched a bit there on the low carb versus keto and the example of somebody not having weight loss success until they include more fat. Let's get into the nuances there a bit more because a lot of people tuning in might be saying, okay, isn't low carb naturally a ketogenic diet? Because a lot of times what people, a practitioner will tell a person is get your carbs down below this level. And that is a ketogenic diet, whether it be 20 grams a day, 50 grams, you know, there's variance there, I'm sure between practitioners. So let's talk about the difference there in more detail. So just lowering carbs can, if you, it can temporarily make ketones in some people. Um, So it may or may not be a ketogenic diet and you don't know unless you actually test. So is that patient making ketones? And I do have some people who go on a, a lower, a, a low carb diet, maybe not to the degree of fat that I want them on and they are making ketones. So if we were only using ketones to judge, we might say, yeah, they're making some ketones. That looks good. Their glucose is not bad, but unless that insulin is coming down, then that's not, that's still not the state I want them in. So it's really looking at all those pieces. Is that the depth of ketosis that's needed for you? Maybe you need more fat. You need, so I usually recommend that we do optimize the fat again, especially for somebody who is in a, a, a weight loss, you know, like a cachectic type. They absolutely need to. Um, but interestingly, I have heard a number of patients who've told me that, yeah, until I optimize my fat, like I just wasn't losing weight or I wasn't optimizing my calories. And again, I'm only using calories as a surrogate for fat almost. Um, but it's like, if you're just eating too lean, right? So if we're eating low carb, but we're not adding fat, then really what we're doing is we're eating a lean protein diet or, and maybe it's fatty protein, but it's just not to the degree of fat. So we think of, you know, steak and burgers as being fatty, but they may not be that fatty. Um, obviously chicken breasts are very lean and even fatty fish like salmon are actually pretty lean when we compare it to maybe a prime ribeye or, you know, butter. Um, so when we optimize that fat, when we, oh, let me back up. Sorry. So eating too lean. So when we eat protein in the setting of kind of that lower carbohydrate diet, we do get some insulin response. If we're eating protein in the setting of a ketogenic diet, in the setting of a fasting mimicking state, we actually don't drive insulin in the same degree. So when we look, um, there was a ketogenic ratio that was published a number of years ago and fat is essentially all ketogenic protein is about 50, 50 protein, uh, uh, insulinogenic versus ketogenic and carbohydrates are almost all insulinogenic, but you can imagine if you took away the carbs, okay, I'm going to take away that insulin part, but I'm also going to not optimize my fat. And now I'm left with mostly protein. Well, that still is not as good as a protein fat mix. That protein fat mix is really the sweet spot. And then the rest of it is just window dressing. Got it. So we know insulin, again, coming back to our major theme here, is a big piece of this, arguably the biggest piece. But when we start talking about low carb versus ketogenic diet, it gets me thinking about ketones specifically and their role in cancer. So we know, you know, going ketogenic is naturally going to bring down glucose in the blood and bring down insulin, which is good. We're going to produce ketones. Does that add additional benefit when it comes to cancer? We do think that ketones have some direct roles in cancer, in, in healing of cancer, in addressing these metabolic and, and, or the, what we call the hallmarks of cancer. So all of these different things that a cell has to be able to do to be a cancer cell to, you know, can it metastasize? Can it grow? Can it create its own blood vessels? Blah, blah, blah. Um, ketones appear to have some direct effects on all of those hallmarks, which is great. Um, 
My only reservation with that is just like with anything. Is it truly the ketones themselves or is it the state of being in a metabolic process that produces the ketones? Because what drug manufacturers see is ketones are what we need. So let's go make a product that we can just give people ketones and they don't have to do this very restrictive diet, which is really just eating real food and how we were naturally meant to, to eat. Um, so I don't find that very restrictive, but that being said, um, I'm there, there's some data out there. They're starting to investigate, you know, should we be adding ketones? I don't know that that data is clear at all. Um, and so my bias is we should be in a state in which we produce ketones and not take ketones. Well, when you talk about a drug to make ketones or a drug that would be ketones, it gets me thinking about natural ways of doing that too, which is MCT oil or exogenous ketones. So for somebody that is adopting the diet, say they're getting endogenous ketones produced, but they want to bump that up using a natural form. Have you seen any success doing that? I don't have enough... um direct, um, comparisons. Do I have people using MCT oil? I do. They use it more as a way to get fat in, as opposed to truly a way to make ketones. And there are some people where I almost don't, I, I, I'm not sure on exactly what is going on because I have people where I just couldn't get their insulin down, but yet I'm looking at their ketone levels going, why does this look so good? And, oh, you're taking a bunch of MCT oil. So I'm not, again, do we know what the magic level of ketones should be during various therapies? I don't think we know. It's not really measured per se in most of those trials. It's eat this way, do this fasting, do this. Some of them are testing, but they're not saying we have to be at a certain level. And might one level be okay? Again, I come back to labs. I have some people who are only making ketones in the 0.5 to 1.5 range. But yet every time I measure, you know, they're more insulin sensitive, more insulin sensitive, more like every lab keeps looking better. Their inflammatory markers are going down. Everything looks great. And they're never in that really deep state of ketosis as a Dr. Seafried would, you know, kind of want to say that people need to be in. Um, whereas others are in really a moderate state. They're 1.5, 2.0s. And their insulin is just sitting where it is. So I always have to come back and say, okay, are they just getting their ketones to that level because they're taking some MCT oil and they're not actually making the metabolic changes that I need them to make? So I use those very strategically. I'm not a huge fan of just dumping them in. I think those are areas where we definitely should do more research because I'm not convinced that they work the same way as following a ketogenic diet and breaking down our fats the way that nature intended. What is an MCT oil? A refined coconut oil. We didn't have any refineries back in the day, so we wouldn't have done it. So I'm not saying that they're not beneficial, and I do use them um strategically, but I, I do start to get a little bit anxious or cautious when I'm seeing disparate numbers. Ketones are higher, but we're not really moving insulin the way I want to. You mentioned Dr. Seafried there. He's been on the show a couple times and to synthesize his message down in the simplest form, it's to starve cancer of glucose and glutamine. And while we're talking about ketones and, and the benefits of them in the ketogenic diet, it gets me thinking about tying that to Dr. Seafree, different fuels for cancer. And what I'm getting at with that is I've heard the argument that ketones can feed cancer. Any research you've seen around that? Yeah, I, I know of two studies that show one was in a cell study. So cells grown in a gel, in a dish are not the same things as cells that grow in our very complex metabolic body. But very interestingly, 
that medium that they were growing the cancer cells in was a high insulin medium. Well, of course they were going to grow because they had insulin. So that one I threw out. Okay, that's an, a non-issue. There was another one, which I believe was in animals. And um, they gave, I think it was in animals. They gave a very high dose of um, uh, acetoacetate versus a very high dose of beta-hydroxybutyrate. So those are two different ketone bodies. And actually, when they gave the high dose beta-hydroxybutyrate, which is actually what most of our ketone supplements are currently, um, there was no growth. But when they gave the acetoacetate, there was growth. Um, so all I think that it, and, and they were quite high doses too. Um, so I, I come back to, we don't want to overfuel, um, any tumor. Um, so we certainly don't even want to, um, you know, I mean, we don't want to overfuel our own cells. We want to live in a nice, nice balance. Um, so I don't see any of the data that really that beta hydroxybutyrate or being in a ketogenic state would grow cancers. There is a little bit of caution, I think, when we're adding excess in, so not naturally produced. And I always come back to the MCT oil of, well, is that naturally produced or not natural? I mean, our liver's producing those ketones from a fat, but that's a little bit different than using long chain fatty acids for metabolism, which does have different metabolic properties in the cell and how it turns on and off insulin. So I, I still will always go back to, I'd rather people eat a real food, saturated fat type ketogenic diet than add in these other pieces until we have more information. But again, if somebody can't eat and we're trying to make a smoothie and just get some fuel into them, we might add some MCT oil. We know that ketones can be muscle sparing, can, you know, have some, um, other favorable metabolic effects, but I think we have to do it with caution. If you enjoyed that clip, press here for the full episode. I'll see you over there. This is your body saying, hey, I finally had to throw down this really big, scary word at you so that you would stop and listen, so that you would stop and look. And so now let's just work to see what is...